Hi, I'm James Jones, a solutions engineer with F5 and Nginx. In this demo, we'll continue to build off what Timo showed by adding Nginx Plus as a load balancer with micro-caching to help take the load off the unit server. Additionally, we'll be enabling advanced analytics for integration with Prometheus. So to continue on the demo, uh, the previous demo, um, I'm just going to start here and we're going to go through the Docker Compose file and just kind of show you the differences that we've added here. And, you know, I've got my own special container that I have here um, that I've made for this to add some additional things to uh, Timo's. And we can actually, we can take a quick sneak peek at that real quick. So to the Nginx space one, I'm just um, adding some customization for the WordPress to make sure that we're staying consistent with the um, Earth or the solar system theme that we have. Um, and then obviously I had to make some changes to the functions for my environment to make sure we're going to the right ports and to the right URLs inside the function definitions for WordPress. Um, the other one is for this one, for the um, MariaDB, MariaDB, um, that one, um, I am just made it, made it a little bit easier by having it auto auto load the um, WordPress database that we're using. So it, uh, that's actually, it's a good thing to uh, know to, if you put any sort of database dump and put it into the entry point in it db dot D in the Myra DB on containers, it will actually automatically um, import um, those database dumps. So which is kind of a useful thing to have. And then, we have the addition, the new container for Nginx Plus. And this is going to now be the um, load balancing service here. And I'm making it dependent on the WordPress container. And then obviously the WordPress container is dependent on the database container. And then I'm going to be, I move the ports that were being assigned to the WordPress container and adding them to the uh, Nginx Plus container. And additionally, opening up the uh, port for the API for uh, Nginx. And then I'm binding, um, I'm binding the volume for the configuration so I can just make quick configuration changes here and have the ability to load, to load, uh, to load those changes on the fly. So it's, it's pretty simple. And now we're going to go take a look at the Nginx configuration. We'll go ahead and we'll just start off quickly with the, um, the API one. And this is kind of important, um, something that you need to do um, is for enabling the uh, Prometheus metrics. So there's a couple of things that you need to do. Um, if we look at the images, the, the configuration for the Docker container for Nginx. Um, I'm actually having to make a change to, to the Nginx, uh, uh, Nginx main configuration here um, because I need to be able to load the um, NJS module, and because that's that's what we use for Prometheus. Um, if we look at the Docker file, additionally, when you build your container, if if you're running a container or if you're doing this on a VM, you're going to need to add to install this Nginx Plus uh, Nginx Plus module Prometheus. That includes the NJS script that allows for the analytics for the um, exporting of um, that allows for the exporting of the analytics for Prometheus. We go back and look at the configuration here, and then we include that JavaScript, and then we do a JS content, which basically means tells Nginx to call this JavaScript function that's being exported by this script. And that gives us the output. 
and we'll I'll show I'll show that in a little bit once we have everything up and running. Then if we look at the load balancing configuration, and because I'm using Docker Compose here, I can take a little sh some little shortcuts in regards to um, applying server names. Um, one of the one of the neat features of Nginx Plus is service discovery. So all you have to do is add just the one line for server and the upstream, and Nginx will go get all those all the servers through a DNS lookup, which is actually provided by the Docker environment. And so you could have a um, hundred um, Nginx instances defined. Or, or instances of any um, HTTP service that you want, it would automatically add them to the upstream here. And I'll show you an example of that, again, once we get everything up and running. And so I actually have two different upstreams here, one for the API and one just for the WordPress. Then I set, I set up, so I, this is where we start to set up the um, caching, the, the micro caching. And you want to make sure you define a key. So this allows you to differentiate um, the different uh, items that are being cached because they need to kind of have a unique ID that gets hashed. And so I'm using the URI, any args, or if there are args or aren't any args, and the args at the key off of. And then I specify the um, hash that I want to use. And that name is actually, this name here directly relates to this configuration up here. Now you have to define the cache path. And so I have two cache paths that I've configured. One for the web WordPress itself and one for the API. I'm doing up to two levels. And then we have to give it the keys zone. You have to give it a name and how, how long or how big, I'm sorry, how big those zones are. That means 10 meg. And then how, how long can an item be, an object in the uh, store there be inactive for before it gets um, expelled? And then the max size. Actually, I got that backwards. Here in the name, that, uh, that's the default inactive time too. I've got it in here twice. That's okay. Um, but then the max size, I'm only allowing for a gigabit, gigabyte of, uh, um, of data because the container shouldn't be that big. Um, one, one thing you can do, you can actually attach another volume to the container as a much larger drive if you need to do a much larger cache. But since we're only doing ma micro caching here right in the container, this works great. And then I'm saying what, what uh, return codes that I want to cache. So I'm doing 200, 206s, 301s, and 302s. Those are temporarily redirect and permanent redirects. Um, this, the 206s are for, um, I believe, 206s are for, chain, you know, when you push or something through, um, through the API, but I, that won't necessarily be happening here. And the 200s obviously are okays. Um, you could cache 400s and 500s if you wanted to, um, but we, we only want to cache good items. And then I want to set the proxy header to the host. So I want to make sure that I'm using the same um, host that's it, in the host header and passing that along to the upstream. And then I just proxy pass to the upstream uh, name, which is Nginx space. And then I'm adding an additional header so we can see that the micro caching is actually working because on first, on first, uh, uh, first pull of the page, we should actually have a cache miss. And on subsequent hits to the page, those should all be, um, those should all be uh, hits under the cache. And then I have the same thing for on the other port. I'm doing a very similar thing to the API. We can actually. Um, Let's add this header here as well that so we can see on the API requests as well. And that makes it, uh, 
that makes it pretty easy. It's a pretty easy and clean config. And in basic use case, you can enhance this, but this is like the bare, you know, bare bones. And actually this would work pretty well in, in a production environment. Um, supposing that you actually scale up, you know, run at least two Nginx pluses along with uh, more WordPresses in the back. But since we're only running here in, um, on Docker desktop, um, I'm going to scale up the Word, uh, the WordPress instances, but only have one Nginx instance running. So go ahead and bring this up. Okay, make sure come up. We have no errors. Now I'm gonna s actually. I'll show you. I'll show you uh, the dashboard real quick, and we can see the changes. Go ahead and go space. Let's go look at the dashboard. So here in the dashboard. We can see our upstreams. We have one upstream each. We can see the different and the different uh, server zones that we have. We can also take a look at the caches. They're yellow because they don't actually have anything in them, and there's no hit ratio because we haven't made any requests yet. And then the shared zone, so you can keep an eye on the memory. Now, the thing I wanted to show you here with the automatic um, automatic discovery of upstreams. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this off now. And then we're going to scale up the WordPress services and let's make them five. Everything should be up and running. Now, if you look, the API, the dashboard automatically refreshed. And now you can see we have five instances. And, and, and Nginx is, Plus is doing that all on its own. It's doing it uh, through its service, service discovery feature, um, which is actually a pretty cool little uh, utility here. Now, if we go just to the main page here, so let's go ahead and pull up the developer dashboard here. So we pulled up the nice little planet planet page. And if we look, we'll see we have all these different changes here. And so we have an Nginx that's it cache has expired, so it went and got a new element. And if we do this again, we have a cache hit, which is pretty cool. Now, the other thing, if we look at stuff that was sent to, see if we can find a, one of the API requests. No, oh, that's Google One. Could have gotten gotten. I'll have to look at the APIs it requests a different way. But Interesting. All right. So but you can see that at least on the main web page on the WordPress, the caching is actually working. It pulled from the disk. And if I were to open up another shell here. And go into the load balancer. 
Very. Here we go. Two, four. And I look. So we put the hashes in the temp directory. So we have these two here, and we can see we actually have data in here. And these are the different objects that we pulled from the WordPress server. Yeah, see, and that's some sort of. Oh, we don't have file coming. So over. Oh, never mind. But we can see it's a some sort of data file. But now, if we go back up and we remove all of these, if we were to refresh, we should get a miss. And see, cache was a miss. And we refresh now, we have a hit. Got a hit. So this is all this is all enabling the the uh, micro caching to help take some of that load off the unit server. Now, if we look here. We can also now see the uh, metrics we talked about earlier. If we go to the metrics U URI. And these metrics are all being outputted by the, Prome by the uh, Prometheus script that we've created that works with our NJS to, to create an endpoint for Prometheus to go to to scrape um, all the analytics. So these are all the different possible analytics that you can get um, through the through the uh, API. And this is actually kind of cool. You can see this is, you know, the numbers change because this is all this is all within uh, certain periods of time. Uh, but yeah, this is this is allow this allows for better visibility to Nginx, you can see what's happening. You can see how many ca how much traffic you have going through. You can look at the cache itself, find how big a cache is. Like we can even you can look at how many slabs are used. You can look at um, amount of memory. So there's a lot of data here, which is really cool. That um, that you get f far more, far more data in this than you would uh, get with just regular open source. Because all you get with the open is the status stub, and this is way better than the uh, status stub, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, so that that was kind of showing how to set up the micro caching, the analytics, and then actually showed you. Uh, by nature of the environment, how to do the um, uh, service discovery. So you got an extra f feature for free here today. So you can see it's pretty simple to add a little caching and load balancing to Nginx Plus to help make your unit server run even better. And with advanced analytics, you'll have full visibility into your environment. I'm James Jones, and thanks for watching.